Let's do it. Cup size matters and it can affect penetration. And the reason is because it's the it's the amount of argon flowing out the tip of that cup and the size of the shielded area. And that shielded area is the only place that cleaning action will go. So if you limit the shielded area by using a standard number five cup and about 12 to 15 CFH, some of that energy that would otherwise kind of be di dissipated out in that cleaning zone goes into the puddle and can help with penetration. Here's the same type of joint, just a different view. And let's watch that puddle now. Let's read that puddle. Watch it sink. You can see in between dabs, it's sinking down. And that's the best indication that you're penetrating all the way. I'm going to be showing a little technique that I like to use that not only helps with penetration, but also helps me from having to reprep a lot of electrodes. This is a 063 butt joint in a steel homemade welding fixture. And the technique is this, basically. When I'm not adding filler rod, I'm down there really tight with an arc, and then I raise up the electrode while I add filler metal. And that lets me use that tight arc for penetration, but then I lift the electrode up to keep from crapping it up when that puddle lifts up from the additions of filler metal. Now, if you didn't quite catch that, I'm going to show it again here in just a second, and I'm going to magnify it a little bit so you can really see what I'm, what I'm doing. It's sort of a subtle movement, I'm not lengthening the arc extremely long, but while I'm adding filler, the puddle raises up, and I just get that electrode out of the way. And then when I'm not adding filler, I'm down there good and tight to kind of help me get penetration and keep somewhat of a narrow bead. Let's take a quick look at one technique for making a restart. And I want to point out something that I forgot to do. And that is I forgot to set my preflow up to around one and a half seconds, maybe even two seconds. If your machine doesn't have preflow, you can just do it manually by bumping the pedal and making sure there's gas flowing for a good one and a half or two seconds before you light up. Earlier I mentioned that the cleaning action didn't like to go where there was no argon, so having argon there when you strike up can make a cleaner restart. The reason I'm backing into that bead a ripple or two before I take off is I really want to blend it in on the back side. I want the back side to look like there wasn't a restart. Now you're going to be able to see the restart on the front side largely because of that little cloudy area where I forgot to put the preflow on. But hopefully the back side will look better. And of course a little wire brushing or scotch bright would take care of that little fuzzy looking area anyway. Backside penetration is pretty consistent and that little place in the middle where I restarted is be hard to tell where that is. Let's take a look at another joint. This is using a number six stubby gas lens. In this case I put a slight chamfer on this 1 8 inch material just to see if that would really help kind of focus the heat. I only chamfered it about a third the way through. You can definitely penetrate 8th inch aluminum without a chamfer, but a little slight chamfer actually helped quite a bit. You'll really be able to see that puddle sink here. Each time I move ahead in between dabs, it just sinks down, and I'm using that same technique where I raise and lower the electrode. I believe I was set on about 140 amps, but I was using the foot pedal for that. This is some thinner metal, and sometimes it can be a little bit subtle in how that puddle sinks or drops. You really have to watch it. This is 040, and it is sinking in between dabs. And this, again, this is half speed, so I'm not welding this slow. Now let's go ahead and take a look at it at normal speed. This is 120 hertz. You can kind of hear it humming in the background. AC frequency definitely has an effect on penetration as well. And let's take a quick look at that. I set a round piece up in a turntable and ran some sample beads at 50 all the way up to 250 hertz on the frequency so that the travel speed would be the same. I did add filler metal. This was not a joint. Uh, just I put a camera on the back side so that you could see how it was penetrating. And the 50 hertz, you can see that little, looks like a caterpillar crawling along. It was definitely penetrating, no problem, smooth penetration. But when I turned it up to 250 hertz, same amperage, same travel speed, same filler metal size, everything the same, 
I got a very different result. You see that bead is just laying up on top there. Now that's it's kind of like with pulse welding, high speed pulse welding. You can you can set a certain amperage, you can set the pulse so high that you're not even melting the metal because you lose some you lose some heat input with all that switching that goes back and forth. And that's what's happening here, it's just switching back and forth, alternating current is switching from EN to EP, electrode negative to electrode positive. And it, there's a little time loss in that switching. It focuses the arc. It des definitely has an application, but you just need more amperage if you're going to penetrate. Another area where you need more amperage than you would otherwise is when you're using a some type of a chill block. Chill fixture. This is a weld test fixture. They're very commonly used for aerospace tests. But you need a good probably 10, sometimes as much as 20% more amperage when you lock something down in a fixture like this and you have you have chill bars, sometimes you even have copper on the back side that's really close to the weld and you want it to pull heat out of the weld but you just got to realize that it takes more amperage to penetrate something like that than it does something in free state. But you got to get used to it and you kind of got to recognize that well that's going to need more amperage than I, th than I think it would outside the fixture. In this case 75 to 85 amps is what it took to penetrate 063 material. Uh, 60 amps would have done that easily outside the fixture. Sometimes you want to fully penetrate something and you don't really care what it looks like. You just want to really drive it home. And that was the case here. This is a weld that was going to be ground off afterwards with a doubler put over it. So it was going to be ground flush. I just wanted to drive it in there. So I was using probably 20% more amperage than I would have normally. And that, that filler metal is just going to the back side. Hardly any reinforcement on the front side. Now this was an awning support for a commercial building. Definitely didn't want it to catch a high wind and snap in the high stress area here. So the welds ground flush and then a doubler was cut on the plasma cam. The doubler was quarter inch material. And so that weld uh, was pretty much all that that little air cooled torch wanted to handle. One more weld to show. Okay, fixtures can be made out of pretty much any material. This one is all carbon steel. It's a homemade one. And carbon steel chill bars with carbon steel backing, when they're this far away from the weld, don't pull all that much heat out. So maybe only 5 to 10% more amperage is required here than it would be needed to weld this in free state. Let's take a quick look here at a half speed, just to see if we can watch that puddle sink a little bit. It's pretty subtle. It almost looks like it's laying up on top. Except every now and then you can kind of see it in between dabs. You can kind of see it sink a little bit. And I still get fooled every now and then on a joint like this where I think it's perfectly penetrated and it's not. But this one did pretty good. Hey, I'd appreciate it if you go check out my store at weldmonger.com. High quality welding gear like TIG kits, tungsten, gloves, new products being added regularly. Go check out the reviews. Appreciate your support.